Hi everybody, it's Deba Do. Thank you so much for joining me again today. We'll be using Tim Holtz Blueprint 2 stamp collection to make one last Easter card before the season ends. I um, want to say, pardon my fingernails. I am going to be going on a cruise in a couple days and I will be taking care of those shortly, but please forgive me. I will be stamping using the Misty tool, which is a new tool that's been created by a young lady over at My Sweet Petunia. And MISTI stands for Most Incredible Stamping Tool Invented. And it really helps to line up the stamps so that you get an accurate, complete stamp every time. So if you miss stamp, you just close it up again and it lands right in the exact spot that you stamped previously. Another thing I like about this tool is the Bible verse up at the top and it reads, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. And that's from 1 Peter 4, 10. And I just love that. We all have a talent. We all have a, a gift that we could use to uplift others and see others through their troubled times in life and cheer people up and cheer them on. And I just love this tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the card to the standard A2 side, and it's gonna measure four and a quarter by five and a half. So on this sheet of paper, you can see that I had some text on the back, and so I couldn't find a sentiment and a stamp that I owned, and I couldn't find something on Cricut to cut out, so I ended up typing up a sentiment on um, Word on my computer, and I printed out uh, a couple of the sentiments onto this um, cardstock. And so I'm going to turn the card stock over and then cut out the card base. Yeah, so I'll be going on a cruise to South America, getting away from this cold winter, even though spring has sprung here in the northeast it's still in the mid 30s so it's still chilly so i'm i'm so looking forward to the warm temperatures down in uh, puerto vallarta and um, belize and those areas of warmth i can hardly wait so i've cut the base and the image base as well and so i'm going to go ahead and stamp the architectural egg shape onto this image base and you'll notice that once I do the initial stamp, I didn't quite like how it stamped, so I went ahead and inked the stamp up again. And again, I was able to close the window and re-stamp it in the exact same spot that I had first initially stamped. So that's, that's one of the great things about this MISTI tool. I'm using Memento ink because I am going to be doing some Copic marker just light Copic marker, not a lot of shading, not a lot of highlighting, just putting the color down on the egg. So those two silver magnets there, they're really high power magnets. You can order magnets um, from Sweet Petunia. However, I already had magnets in my scrapbooking stash that I had bought from uh, Kathy Orta's uh, trinket shop so you can get those over at paperphenomenon.com or at sweet petunia either or but the magnets are very helpful they keep the paper in that precise spot for when you have to re-stamp So I'm going to be using a small amount of Copic markers, just a small variety, um, to shade in some of these colors. Staying away from the pinks and reds, I'm going for a more masculine card, more muted colors. So I'm going to use blues and oranges and some yellows and green.
I'm going to go ahead and color this egg in. Cue the music. Now I'm going to apply some background color by using the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. I'm using the Mode Lawn color. It's a nice vibrant green. It reminds me of the grass that we put in the Easter baskets. And I'm going to leave a little highlight around the egg. I'm just smoothing it out, making sure that the uh, top is darker than the bottom and just work it until it's the desired color that I want. Making sure there's no major splotches in there. So now I have a piece of corrugated cardstock, you know, the kind that's um, that like Starbucks use, uses to put around the card, around the cup, to keep your hands from getting hot. And I'm cutting out the sentiments that I printed out earlier. I'm just cutting them down to size before I apply them to the card. Using my circle punch, the one and a half inch circle punch by EK Success, I'm gonna punch out one of the sentiments. And then I'm going to use the paper distress tool uh, again by Tim Holtz to distress the edges of all the paper because I want this this card to have a, a worn worn look. I want the papers to be distressed. I want to break, break the fibers that are within the paper to give it a softer more worn look. So I'm going to do that around all the edges and then once I've distressed all the edges I'm going to go back in with some distress ink and ink the edges of the paper. I'm going to go ahead and ink all the edges of the papers using Gathered Twigs ink by Tim Holtz. Okay, with all the inking done, now it's just time to assemble the card. I'm cutting a fish tail into the uh, edge of the sentiment, inking it again, and then I'm going to roll it up and give it a little more distressed look, like it's been blowing in the wind. Again, I'm breaking the fibers of the paper, and I'm going to wrinkle it up and just give it that real worn look.
Okay, along with the scotch mounting tape, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of uh, glossy accents to adhere the tip of that sentiment down to the corrugated cardstock. Using a crop dial, which is from We Are Memory Keepers, I am punching, I punched a hole and inserted an eyelet into this tag. And then I'm going to run the uh, natural jute string through it. And then I will be wrapping it around the card base. So I added a couple of jump rings to the tag and I'm going to wrap the jute string around the card and add the tag to the string. But before I do that, I realized, you know what, I want some more accent on this tag. So I grabbed a uh, gold painter's marker, which I got at Walmart. And I'm just um, applying a gold accent to the edge of the tag. Real simple. Okay, so I'm going to take the card base that I cut earlier, which measures eight and a half by five and a half, and I'm going to score it down the middle at the four and a quarter mark. And then, of course, fold it in half and then burnish it with my bone folder, making the standard A2 size card. And then I'm going to adhere our image to the front of the card base. And there you have it. That is my last Easter card for the season. I'm going to add a little bit of glossy accents because, you know, more is more. And so I'm adding some glossy accents. And to carry on with the blueprint architectural feel of the image, I'm adding just a little bit of arch architectural blueprint accent to the sentiment just by adding an arrow and a couple of measurements. And so now you have it, the final card for my Easter season. I will see you all when I get back from the cruise. Please uh, be sure to subscribe to my, my uh, YouTube channel. Visit me at Facebook. And um, thank you. Thank you so much for viewing my videos. I appreciate you. Bye-bye.